Ow! Oh! Oh! Hi. Uh, this is supposed to help you, but it kind of hurts. Uh, welcome to GMAD Tuesdays. My name is Kevin, and it's Tuesday, coming to you from Magoosh. Um, today, we're talking a little bit about data sufficiency problems on the GMAT, and specifically, um, a trap that you should avoid. Something that causes students some problem on the test are their assumptions. So, that's why I've written, beware of your assumptions. Don't be lazy, don't jump into a problem and just assume that you know what's going on, because the GMAT's tricky. They make problems a little bit tricky, and they're looking for lazy students. So, I'm gonna grab my pin here, and let, you, let me show you what I mean. So, imagine that you have this question on the test, is what is the value of x? It's test day, I'm taking the test, I know I need to keep moving. I look at this question, I'm like, all right, I gotta solve for x. I look, I see I have two linear equations with two values. I know that if I have two variables, and I have two, questions, two linear equations with those variables, I can solve for any one of those variables. And I'm like, all right, I just need both of these C moving forward. But you just got that question wrong because of assumptions. You're making too many assumptions. Yes, you have two variables. And yes, you have two linear equations. And usually, yes, that means you can figure out what the value of one of those variables are. But let's work this problem and see why that's not true. So we can quickly eliminate a couple of answer choices. So I can see in statement one, I'm not going to be able to figure out what x is, what x, uh, what the value of x is, excuse me, because I still have this y. So I'll eliminate a. Um, look at statement two. Again, same thing. Have two variables. I'm not going to know which, um, what the value of x is with that y in there. This is where you need to pay attention. Together, you think, oh, I can solve for these together and get the value of uh, x. But let's work statement one and see if we can make it equal to y and see what happens. So if we come over here, 5x plus 3y equals 15. Okay, so that's statement one. Let's move our 5x over, so minus 5x minus 5x. So now I have 3y equals 15 minus 5x. Am I in the way? Can you see this? Okay. Now I can divide by 3 on both sides, right? Now I have y equals 5 minus 5 thirds x. Look, this is the same as this. So now I know that they're giving us just the same information in two different statements. It just looks different, but it's actually the same thing. So you're not actually getting two different linear equations. You have the same one, just written differently. So both of these problems together are definitely not gonna work. I know because A and B didn't work that D is not correct. And so E here is the correct answer. So on the test, beware of your assumptions. Don't let them uh, lead you to taking a shortcut to the wrong answer. Do enough work to be certain that you have the right answer. You can do this fairly quickly, um, just don't rush through it and you'll be okay. So with data sufficiency, beware of what they're giving you. They might be trying to trick you. All right, that's all I have. Uh, if you have any questions about the GMAT or data sufficiency questions, drop them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer them. Also, if you like uh, GMAT Tuesdays and want to keep uh, be up to date when new videos are released, feel free to subscribe to our channel. And then finally, go check out gmat.bagoosh.com uh, for more excellent GMAT prep material that's also fun. All right, be excellent to the universe, and I will see you next week.